welcome everyone on behalf of the Greater London Authority, the Mayor of London and London Assembly members to City Hall. We are here to celebrate the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and pay tribute to His Majesty King Charles III. We are joined today by Sir Kenneth Elisa, Lord Lieutenant, and a number of Deputy Lieutenants, MPs and borough leaders from across London, the Chair and Chief Executive of London Councils, colleagues from the Metropolitan Police Service, the London Fire Brigade and Transport for London, and some former Assembly members. I am pleased that so many of you could be with us today. This is a poignant service of remembrance, giving thanks for the life and service of Her Majesty. So let us begin by standing and observing two minutes of silence to reflect on Her Majesty's life. Please take your seats. I now invite the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, to pay his tribute to Her Majesty the Queen. Good morning. The outpouring of grief, sorrow, and affection that we've witnessed since the devastating news reached us uh, of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's passing shows how many lives she touched with her singular grace and powerful example of duty and dignity. It wasn't just that the Queen was there during moments of great historical importance, but that it felt like she was with us at times of personal significance too. I'll never forget what it meant to swear my oath of allegiance to the Queen as an MP, or my pride at becoming a member of her Privy Council. One of my fondest childhood memories was lining the streets with fellow Londoners as her silver jubilee procession wound its way past our estate in Tooting. I was there with family, friends and neighbours and there are pictures of us 
me and my brothers and sister waiting eagerly by the roadside, beaming from ear to ear, Union Jack flags in hand and paper crowns on our heads. I'll never forget the excitement of that day, nor will I forget the joyous atmosphere and the way those celebrations brought people together. For that's what our Queen had a unique and unrivaled capacity to do, to bring people together. Even in an age that all too often feels overshadowed by polarization, by extremes, by rupture and rancor, she found a way to transcend it all. But she didn't just rise above it. Throughout her life, she was a shining force that bound us all together. As the winds of change swirled around her, decade after decade, she offered continuity and a calm, understated leadership that demonstrated there need not be any conflict between the past and present, between tradition and modernity, between the old ways of doing things and the bright new future that was coming into view. She resolved tensions that our society had often struggled to, and she did so with subtlety and style. Yes, there was still the pomp and pageantry, but it was combined with parachute jumps and Paddington Bear. That good humour, that authentic humility, and that human touch is what endeared her to us all. And it's what made her not just a modern monarch, but a great unifier. Someone who united rather than divided. Someone who reminded us that we're far more in common than that which separates us. Let me end by saying this. The Queen leaves such an extraordinary legacy that will endure in our hearts and in communities for generations to come. A legacy of selflessness, a legacy of unity, and a legacy that crystallizes the virtues of living a life in the service of others. Inspired by the Queen's public service and her sense of duty, it's in her image that I believe we must now go forward together. But as a new era begins, we must be mindful that this is also a profound moment of sadness for our new king. And I know that all of London will join me in extending our condolences to His Majesty the King and to the whole of the royal family, especially the Queen's children and grandchildren. King Charles III served his apprenticeship under the wisest of mentors and has already lived a life of service, from his time in our armed forces to his tireless work with the Prince's Trust and much, much more. I have every faith he will follow the golden example set by his mother. Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. Long live. King Charles the Third. Thank you, Sadiq. Let us now hear reflections from the Chair of the London Assembly, Dr. Onka Sahota Ayam. Good morning. We gather to mark one of the saddest days in our nation's history, the loss of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As Chair of the London Assembly, I would like to take this opportunity to speak on behalf of all Londoners and remember the enormous sacrifice, dedication and service of Her Majesty to the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. No one comes close, and may never come close, to the great affection we've held for her 
over the decades. I hope that looking back on the fond memories we have, we have of Her Majesty will provide Londoners and so, with some solace in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. From the very first televised Queen's Christmas message broadcast of 1957 and the hundreds of balcony appearances to appointing her 15th Prime Minister just 48 hours before her passing. Her memory will also live through the archi architecture and the, and the infrastructure of her great capital city. The Elizabeth Line, the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, and of course, her home of Buckingham Palace, to name just a few examples. There are so many memorable moments, it's impossible to mention them all. Like her tenure in the Auxiliary Territorial Service in 1945, becoming the first female member of the royal family to join the armed forces as a full-time active member, and her bravery during the gunshot at the Trooping of the Colour. We're reminded of more light-hearted moments, like a recent afternoon tea with the Penton Bear for the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, and her surprise appearance with Jane Bond's Daniel Craig for the 2012 Olympic opening ceremony. The steadfast continuity of her reign has seen this great country through good times and bad. She has been a beacon of certainty for all of us through periods of anxiety and change. Most recently, I know many Londoners will have found hope and comfort in her words during the coronavirus pandemic, when she reassured the nation that better days would return and we would meet again. We can all learn of important lessons from her dedication to duty and unwavering service. I've had the honor of attending two garden parties at Buckingham Palace, the first celebrating 50 years of the NHS, and the second more recently as a London Assembly member. On the second occasion, I was able to take my father as a guest. He was a practicing Sikh who came to England as a young man to carve a better future for himself and his family. Going to Buckingham Palace was beyond his wildest dreams, and the occasion was overwhelming for him. I saw how Her Majesty was able to put people at their ease and make them fo the focus of her attention. I also saw the former Prince of Wales when I had the privilege of meeting him and his wife on a visit to an Indian restaurant in Southall to highlight the importance of using local organic produce in our meals. We have already seen the warmth and human touch of King Charles in his words and actions since succeeding to Her Majesty the Queen. Londoners are united in grief, but there's also an opportunity to celebrate a life well lived in the service of others. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II will forever uh, live in the hearts and minds of Londoners. God save the King. Thank you, Anka. Please now stand for our first hymn, I Vow to Thee, My Country.
Please be seated. We move now to prayers and reflections from multi-faith leaders and invited guests. We have with us today the very Reverend Andrew Nunn, Dean of Southwark, Rabbi Miriam Berger, Principal Rabbi, Finchley Reform Synagogue, Imam Mohammed Mahmoud, Senior Imam, East London Mosque, Rita Chadha, Director, City Sikhs, Ranish Kashyap, General Secretary, Hindu Council UK, and Deborah Hooper, Director of Ceremonies, Humanist UK. As part of her Diamond Jubilee celebrations, Her Late Majesty the Queen spoke to assembled leaders of the faith communities at Lambeth Palace, and she set the record straight about the role of the established church, of which I happen to be a member, which she said was often misunderstood. Its role is not to defend Anglicanism to the exclusion of other religions, she said. Instead, the church has a duty to protect the free practice of all faiths in this country. A woman of committed Christian faith who understood people of all faiths and none. That is a legacy on which we must build and on which King Charles, I'm sure, will build. And so for the king, I pray. O God, you provide for your people by your power and rule over them in love. Bless your servant Charles, our king, that under him this nation may be wisely governed and your church may serve you in all godly quietness. And grant that he, being devoted to you with his whole heart, and persevering in good works unto the end, may by your guidance come to your everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth was a true genius without contemporary parallel leading and representing people of diverse ethnicities, beliefs, and attitudes to life. For the first time in our history, we Jews felt completely rooted during her reign, no longer outsiders here in Britain. Despite, or maybe because, Her Majesty served as head of the Church of England with reverence for the shared roots of our two religions, We feel so strongly that our Jewish values are expressed within the Britishness that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth articulated and embodied every day of her reign. May God, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, bless the memory of our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and bring God's shelter to this new era as you bless our sovereign, King Charles III. May God give wisdom to the political leadership of this country and to all who have responsibility for its safety and its welfare. May God give us all the strength to do our duty and the love to do it well, so that justice and kindness may dwell in our land. May God's peace be in our hearts, so that every community of our nation may meet in understanding and respect, united by love of goodness and keeping far from violence and strife. Together may we work for peace and justice among all nations, and may we and our children live in peace. So may this kingdom find its honour and greatness in the work of redemption and the building of God's realm here on earth. May such be the divine will. And let us say, Amen. When asked, who is the best among the believers in character? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, the best of them in character. Character is one's capital. It comes naturally, without effort 
or intent. It's what breaks through the facade and cannot be feigned. It's what one is known by and inevitably remembered by. You are God's witnesses on earth, the Prophet Muhammad also said. The outpouring of emotion and grief at Her Majesty the Queen's passing is something that cannot be orchestrated and seldom repeated over the course of history. Her character shone brighter than her crown, and it was in fact her character that adorned her rather than the crown adorning her. It's often said that money and fame corrupt, but the truth is, they only reveal a person's true nature. Her Majesty the Queen's nature was clear and evident for all to see, not during one or two trying periods, but over a, glo but over a glorious reign spanning 70 years. Let us give thanks for Her Majesty's tireless service until her very last day, and for her exemplary character, which she left behind as her true legacy. We pray that God aid and strengthen King Charles with wisdom and fortitude. Amen. The City Seeks Foundation shares in the nation's grief following the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen has been a constant and steady presence for all of us during her 70-year reign. As the Sovereign, her love and affection for the Sikh community in the United Kingdom and across the world has been visible throughout. She had a strong understanding about the Sikh faith and her numerous visits to Gurdwaras in London, on our shores as well as elsewhere were occasions which helped bring a strong focus and attention to the Sikh community in a way which would otherwise have not been possible. To our new King Charles III, we welcome his continued commitment to engaging with all faiths and to placing diversity at the heart of his work. As Head of State, we wish him well. Vaigruji ki Khalsa, Vaigruji ki Fateh. Millions of us across the world are saddened at the news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. It is the end of an era which will go down as a unique and important period in history. A remarkable woman who served her, her country and the Commonwealth with loyalty and humility. She left a legacy that will live on long after and will always be remembered. In this time of mourning and reflection, I want to highlight the inspiration I have drawn by seeing Her Majesty perform her duty one last time when she received the new Prime Minister with a big smile just a day before she sadly passed away. Despite what she may have been going through, she put her country and responsibility first, just like she always did. I'd like to share the following short prayers in Sanskrit from the ancient Hindu scripture, Upanishad. Om Astoma Sadgame, Tamsoma Jyotirgame, Mrityuma Amritagame, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. In English, this translates to lead us from ignorance to truth, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to immorality. Peace, peace, peace. Our namaste to new king, Charles III. Humanists are non-religious people who value human welfare and human flourishing in the one life we have. Among the many ingredients of that life are the maintenance of free and democratic societies, the orderly transfer of political power, and the keeping of civil peace. The benefits in a parliamentary democracy are very much in my thoughts today. The late Queen Elizabeth II, as our constitutional monarch, spoke of her personal conviction to respect and value all people of whatever faith and none. That sentiment is one we can all applaud on the basis of our common humanity and was an important message to those of us with non-religious beliefs. Humanists welcome the fact that King Charles III reflected these sentiments in his broadcast on Friday when he pledged to serve the people of this country, whatever their beliefs. 
He also did so earlier this year when, as Prince of Wales, he spoke of his wish to defend liberal democracy, human rights and open societies, this too striking a chord with humanist values. I wish the King long life and happiness and fulfilment and joy in his duties and responsibilities. May he continue to uphold the values of a free society to the benefit of us all. I thank you all very much. Please now stand for our second hymn, Jerusalem. take your seats. The Mayor of London and the Chair of London Assembly will now sign a letter setting out a humble address to His Majesty King Charles III and will also sign the Book of Condolence. I will first invite the Mayor to come forward to sign the letter and book and will then invite the Chair of the Assembly to come forward. Please be upstanding for the national anthem.
concludes our special service of remembrance for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. You are all now invited to join us in London's living room for refreshments and to sign our Book of Condolence. Thank you very much.